when we look at spending of any kind or any of our finances, I think it starts with a budget. And that budget needs to really be complete and honest and truthful. So it may be that you're going to have to um, keep a record for a month or two. And you want receipts from everything you do. You want to record or have on hand a receipt for every penny that goes through your hands. And it may have some surprises. It may not. But your budget should um, include all of the bills that you pay out, everything that you pay for housing, and you might want to do it on a monthly basis because that's when most of our bills come due. But if you have a bill, say your property tax that comes once a year, then you want to divide it up into a monthly amount. And if your property tax is coming up say three months from now, then you would divide it into three months and that's what you need to set aside per month to get to that point so you have the money on hand. Um, the, you wanna include everything that you have so that you have the normal things that you would think about, how much your housing is, whether or not you have to pay utilities, your garbage, your insurance, you wanna take care of transportation. If that's your car note or your clipper card, the insurance for that, how much you spend on gas, what you spend for food, um, the food that you buy at the grocery store, but also the food that you eat out. You know, How often did you swing through that fast food place? And um, your shoes and your work stuff, things that you might only buy on a yearly basis or not at all to set up some sort of account or allowance for that. Anything else that you're trying to cover. If you have played around with your income tax withholding so that you get more money in your check, if it's not going to be the same thing at the end of the year, then you really do need to allot for that so that when April 15th comes around, you have the... Um, monies to pay for that bill. So it comes down to treating our own budget like you would treat a business budget with the, with the um, reserves and the allotment and adding up to stuff. If it turns out that you have bills that are due say at the first of the month, but you don't have any first of the month money yet left, then you can ask them to switch your dates to a later time so that you can pay that bill on the 15th. Things that you buy um, on credit cards or so forth, anytime you're late with anything and they're charging you a late fee, that's costing you money that you don't really wanna have to give up, okay? If you inadvertently didn't pay a bill and you've been paying it on time, ask them to waive the late fee but you don't wanna let it go because that affects your credit and your credit affects not only your ability to borrow money, but could affect you looking for a job because they can pull your credit report sometimes to see whether or not you are a good bill payer. So the, um, there are lots of things going on with money at this point. There's uh, cryptocurrency, which is something that's very confusing to me. There were credit cards offering you to take loans out, to um, balance transfers for your payments. And so you have to think it all the way through. But let me step back to that budget for a moment. Once you have that budget figured out and you figure out how much you're going to need and it comes up to $1,000 and you get $750, you can't afford to do nothing else, okay? Then you need to start looking at that budget as to what you can trim down, what you can do another way. And there are lots of things that you can do. If you have memberships, you might want to look at those. If you are, um, you have to see what's important to you and what's a have to and what's a want, but also, trying to arrange things differently. If you have cable and you're past your first year where they said you could have a deal, then you call them and tell them, I'm gonna cancel because I can't afford it. 
and they will offer you another deal. Um, you may have to let it go altogether. So your entertainment, you may have to look at another way, whether or not you're streaming, you have to look at. So you have to find or other ways of getting the money, um, not spending it or going out and getting a part-time job to add to it. So you can't just wish it away. Or you can't say, I have money in my pocket, I'm gonna spend it because you really don't. So when you um, get into trouble with a uh, company or your checking account or your banking, you don't want to let it go until you have funds. You want to try and talk to them. You want to try and talk to who the uh, loan is from so that maybe they can adjust it for you so that they know that you're working on it, that you're not simply trying to avoid your bills. That goes a long way in how they handle you and how they report whatever you have. So that's important to it as well. And so we get up to that uh, other part of today's conversation was the gift giving. If your budget says you don't have any money, then you don't have a gift giving budget either. Okay, so perhaps we have to look at it differently. Now, I thought that when I looked at Kwanzaa, part of the deal was that there were gifts that you made yourself. So that may be something that you have to look at if you're intending to give a gift is something that you've made yourself or something that is you, a service, a gift of your time, um, something smaller that you can make or if you're a baker or a sewer or any of those things and not give the larger gifts. And um, if people are judging or you feel that you're being judged by the gifts that you give, you might want to see who you're giving gifts to. So um, if you've got your budget straight and you've got where your income and your expenses balance out, that's good. If you have a little money left then, um, or a lot of money left, then you look on the goals of what you want to do to save money. Are you trying to accumulate money for retirement? Are you trying to accumulate money for a new car? Are you trying to accumulate money to pay for someone's tuition, yours or grandkid or child? And then you would set up your budget and add to that every month. If you know that you are going, to, and I'm saying that you accumulate it every month, but then you also have to be disciplined with yourself that you don't go rob that little pot. And if you think that you are, and whatever you're planning for is X number of months out, then you could conceivably buy a certificate of deposit. They have them, well, people have changed what they offer them for now with the uh, interest rates paying, you could buy a 30 day CD. So a CD that matures the month that you want to take it out. Knowing that if you go in and get it out early, you can if there's a legitimate emergency, but it's going to cost you a penalty for early withdrawal. Now, uh, can I, can I in <laughs> interrupt you, uh, uh, Sister Celeste? Uh -huh. So you're on the uh, board of Cooperative Federal a uh, uh, co right. center federal credit union yes what what is that what do you what do you do on that what do, what do you um what's your role i know i know you're the chairperson but what what does that involve it's um a board so board set policy uh mm -hmm. and we govern so sort of oversee what's going on with the credit union to a point we do not actually do the procedures or the work that's up to the staff. So we try and watch and see that staff is on, on, um, on point of what they're supposed to be doing. We also try and um, see that our vision or mission is carried out. So credit unions are different from banks in that they are owned by their members. Their board is the board of volunteers. 
So there's not necessarily anybody that's trained in finance or anything like that. Um, we may uh, have suggestions and or say that there's an unserved population and we need to come up with some ideas for products that will work. For example, um, predatory lending is not good. So we, the board instigated or asked for a product that would replace a payday loan. So still covers the same thing of people needing emergency cash, but in a, a, a more beneficial way that the interest rates weren't as large, that the, the time period could be a little different. Um, we can do some outreach a little bit, kind of like I'm doing with you today uh, for financial literacy. Credit unions are supposed to work within their community and credit unions have two kinds of um, memberships and charters. So we are still, our charter limits us in some ways to um, select employer groups. So Alta Bates is one of our employer groups. Uh, I'm hoping- uh, Alta that, Bates Hospital, that's Alta yes. Bates. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm hoping that uh, Wose will be shortly. Um, so anybody that belongs to that organization can then join the credit union. We also have some ways to work around that in that um, you can join uh, some organizations that stand in for us by making a small donation to that organization or membership like South Berkeley Development Group. And then you can be a member. There are other groups that uh, they tend to have been started. They're not owned by, but they tend to have been started at a place where you work. Like when I worked for Whirlpool, there was a Whirlpool credit um, union. The company didn't own it, but the people that were in it worked for them. That was their group. That was their common bond. Now, being on the board, are you involved with... Um like hiring staff or, or presidents, et cetera? Only the CEO. Only the CEO, I see. Right. So do, they lo do they lobby you? Uh, do you get uh, uh, lobbied for, or are you there in the interview? For the CEO? Uh -huh. If it was the CEO, the board would be doing the interview and the hiring. We have not since I have come on board um, as the chair right now, what I'm looking at is that our CEO will probably retire in three years. So how can you, do I- Can you turn your phone? Because- uh, oh, Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. How do I make, uh, or how do we make our credit union attractive that somebody wants to come and be our CEO that has the vision and the same mission, the same values we do to carry it out and somebody that we can afford. So, you know, the cost of people on the West Coast is a little high. Ah, ah. So um, to see okay. what that brings. So and now then, the Co mm -hmm. Cooperative uh, Center Federal Credit Union, where is that located? Or is, or is it many branches or? There are two. Um, mm -hmm. We used to be located right there at Ashby and Adeline. We have now ah. moved to uh, Ashby and San Pablo, mm -hmm. right on the corner in the Higby building. And then we uh, purchased a building. So, so now hold it, hold it. So for those of you that are uh, in other places across the country, that's in Berkeley, right? That's in Berkeley. Okay, in Berkeley. And Berkeley. the property that we had in Berkeley, we sold and they will be building affordable housing on that. Ah. So that was one of the things that we pushed for was that we sold our building, but we just didn't sell it to anyone. We sold it to people that would use it for affordable housing. So what people that that's another difference in places in that the what's considered poverty in California and the rates for that is probably where a lot of us would fall um, in our thinking and our um, income. I didn't think that, but what comes under that is, is quite open because the prices are so high out there. But at any rate, um, that's the one, it's a branch. 
And then we purchased a building in Martinez, which is uh, between Berkeley and Sacramento or between Oakland and Sacramento. About 45 it, miles away or something like that. Yeah, from um, Berkeley, it's about 45 minutes. Yeah. Don't know how far from Sacramento, but that one we are, we're trying to, um, it's, it's a branch, but we're trying to focus that more as our loan center. Um, we have funds that we would like to lend out. A lot of times credit unions will give you better rates uh, than banks will. Credit unions may also uh, work with you if your, your um, credit score is less than optimal. So, and built relationships. So if you are looking for that, I would suggest that you check in with the credit union. It does not have to be mine, but of course, that's where I would like you to go. <laughs> Any incentives for us uh, uh, being there that you can offer? Do you have to be in state to, uh, to be a part of the credit union? You do not. And as I said, I hope that Wose is going to be a member. Their application is in to uh, join that credit union as uh, a uh, set group. Um, and so anybody who is a member of Wose, regardless of where they are, DC, North Carolina, anywhere, as long as you're a member of Wose, then you can uh, join. And that would have, co of course, cover Sacramento and Ilioma Day as well. Well, let me ask you, um, uh, how did you get involved in, in this credit union stuff? Um, I have used credit unions throughout my life. Didn't really know that there was a difference between a credit union and a bank. And a few years back when they talked about take your money out of the banks and put it in a credit union, I went looking for one in um, Berkeley. And I think at that point, I had been banking at Washington Mutual and I think they got absorbed by Chase. And then you have the fees and so forth that are on accounts. So when I went looking for it, I realized I had been passing the location and joined. And then there were some issues that came up on the board, enough for them to have a public meeting. And I went to the meeting and it was a very small board and there was a little fighting going on. And after that meeting was over, I told them that when they needed someone else on the board that to let me know. And they did. Huh. And I ran for the board and I was elected. So your board members are elected. You, my position in general is if you don't like something, then you need to do something about it. If you're just gonna sit and complain and not take any action, then you need to shut your mouth. Uh. So, um, because this is something that's within your power to do so that you can shift it and shape it. And I like the idea behind a credit union that you're the owner. You're one of many, but it's, you know, you can help direct it. You can say what you want. You can just say what vision is there and what values you want to hold and how you want to do it. So you ask what else the credit union does. We can also sort of set limits on what we invest in, what kind of businesses we don't want to put our money into in terms of just the regular investment, not what kind of members, but what kind of investments where we put our money to grow for it. Um, credit unions want your deposits so that we can turn around and lend them out to our members at a reasonable rate. As I said, the rates are usually a little bit better. Right now we have uh, money that we would like to lend. And so we need to do that. If we don't lend money out and earn interest on that, then we don't have money to give you in the form of dividends. So credit unions do pay dividends to their members because their members are owners. Now, now, what are dividends? When the credit union makes money, we pass it on to our members. If you were holding uh, stock in a private company, you would uh, 
be paid dividends. You don't get dividends in the bank because you are not an owner. You don't own shares in a bank. Their shareholders do, their investors do, which is usually not you. <laughs> so in order to get money from you know, Chase, you'd have to have Chase stock. So sure. in a credit union, once you're a member, you are a member and you vote on things that come up before the, the um, what's gonna happen. You vote for the board of directors, the board of directors then votes for its officers. So a lot of people don't know the difference and are not active, but you should kind of come to that annual meeting. Um, it's a place to voice your opinion of what you want and what's going on. You can become active, you can run for the board, Somebody can nominate you and you can nominate yourself. The terms are about three years. There are all sizes of credit unions. Um, the bigger ones out in California would be Travis is nearby. I think the other one's called Patelco. Um, and again, it's the same thing. Credit unions may also give you a different kind of relationship, a little more personal relationship than other kinds of financial institutions. And there are different kinds of ways of doing business now. So all the different products for online banking and so forth will be coming up, but there's Greenwood, and I'm not sure what they're calling themselves. Maybe they're calling themselves a bank. The one that is fronted by Andrew Young and a celebrity entertainer. I don't remember who that is anymore, but they are not um, necessarily black owned. The person who does their processing is a white bank in the Northeast. Hmm. So there is one guy that has a black bank and he is the sole owner of his bank. So there are different things to be considered in that area of trying to find it. We are a minority uh, depository institution, which means that our board and our members are uh, more than 50% minority. That minority includes all minorities, not necessarily African-American. The um, We're also CDFI, which means doing community work. So credit unions are often more active in their communities than other kinds of financial institutions. So um, you mentioned uh, better uh, interest rates. Um, do you happen to know currently what the interest rates are there at uh, your credit union? I do not. And uh -huh. it would depend on your, uh, what product you're interested in and your personal financial situation. Like for a mortgage, if you were going to go for an adjustable rate mortgage or a 30 year fixed mortgage, um, for car loans, part of it includes, or part of the consideration is what kind of credit score you have. And again, the board um, may approve what the rates are going to be, but we don't set them. We don't have that expertise. We're just volunteers. We don't have the special training to do that. So we don't have that kind of knowledge base. Mm -hmm. So in general, uh, uh, you know, I'm not uh, asking for a deep dive to drill down, but uh, what products uh, do you, th does your credit union offer? And, and then uh, Katabasi has a question. So we have, checking accounts, savings accounts, certificates of deposit, IRAs. Um, we offer auto loans, first mortgages, floating home mortgages, cooperative housing uh, financing. Uh, the cooperative financing and the floating homes might be a little unique product wise. We offer the loan that's um, like a payday loan with better terms. Mm -hmm. Uh, can't think of any others right offhand. We have our fees are lower or non-existent compared to other financial institutions. Um, 
we offer signature loans for your personal loans that you would come in and just on your uh, request, not a loan for a particular thing. Mm -hmm. We would offer home equity loans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the Catabasi. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Celeste, I cut you off. What you were going to say something? Oh, I was going to say if there's a kind of loan or product that you want, um, please let me know. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Brother Catabas, go ahead. Thank you. I have uh, two short questions. The first question is uh, the dividends. You say it pays dividends. Are the dividends paid to the account or, or, the, or the dividends? sent out uh, to the uh, participant uh, members. They're members. posted to your account. Okay, good. And my second question is, is do you have any, any, any uh, insights into the act of gifting, gifting money to an individual or to a group? I do not. Um... And I'm not sure that it's covered under our financial um, literacy. We do have um, on our website, uh, if you look at Cooperative Center Federal Credit Union, you can go to the menu and look at uh, educational resources. And that will give you a list of the courses that are offered. So. Um, how to choose a checking account, how to choose what kind of banking you want to do, how to set up different things. They're all there. Some of them are very short, five, six minutes. Mm -hmm. And you can learn about what you want. There's also a group called Investopedia that has um, courses and information on it. Gifting has a few different things that you can do. Um, it depends on your personal tax situation and what you want to do, whether or not, and there's some limits that IRS sets on what you can give. There are um, larger corporations that will help you. Like if you wanted to give to the Y or Red Cross, they would help you set up gifting to them um, as part of your will or your endowment. There are programs that they have um, where you can uh, you can set up your investment so that it will pay you money while you're alive and then the remainder goes to them. So you can talk with the people are in their um, development offices of the group that you want to send it to or your personal accountant to tie it into your tax situation as to what, um, what that would require, what it would cost you to do it, whether or not you can, because there are IRS limits. Right, very good, thank you. All right, hey, uh, can I share my screen? I have the uh, website um, up, thank you, Bill. <laughs> Um, can everyone see that? Is, uh, would it help to uh, navigate through this? So, yes, if you will mm -hmm. um, choose menu. Menu. Or, I'm sorry, on that top line, I can't quite get it that big. There okay. we go. Education and resources. Okay, where is that? <laughs> I don't see it. Uh, um, below oh, right there where it says education and resource. Right. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. And 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 where? So it gives you so here 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 yeah under financial education. You right. Got, okay. And these are some. So of the, those okay. are the kinds of courses and things they will cover: uh -huh. uh, financial wellness in uncertain times financial foundations, building financial capacity, owning a home, investing in your future. And these are not um, written by the credit union. We have a vendor that supplies us with these educational um, components. 
So it's not biased toward our institution in any way, but there's several things under each of those that would uh, take you through it or how you would go about it. So, um, Mm -hmm. looking at say owning a home click on or click on any one you have an interest in this the, this is always one that comes up owning a home and here we go okay oh and oh and it has uh are, are these uh videos that uh have so them? yeah these are um a little short it may be just uh written in it so you have um, considering home ownership, it talks about the reverse mortgages. That's always a confusing one for people that may come in handy. Um, it talks about the mortgages and mortgage relief if you get stuck, investment property, should you refinance your mortgage? So there, because there is a time when you want to refinance, when the rates were really low, uh, and they still may be lower depending on when you when you purchased your house. I mean, they keep going on about how high interest rates are, but I'm sure there are a few of you that are close to my age who remember when you could have a 10% 10, uh, 10 interest on your house mortgage. So my daughter didn't believe me. She went and looked it up. <laughs> but there was a time when interest rates were much higher than they are now. Sure. Um, and so refinancing, if you were going to stay in your house, could prove beneficial. And there's a cutoff point. If you're planning on selling your house, then you may not reap the benefit of refinancing it because you would not have gotten your money that it cost you for that loan. So you would shop to refinance just like you would shop for your mortgage. And if you get stuck, as I said, there's mortgage relief. So it tells you the different steps to go through, what to take. Uh, what to do to get some help with your mortgage or redo it so that you're not in default on it. So you're not subject to foreclosure. That's why I said you want to ask somebody for help as soon as uh, you realize that problems are coming. So different things to uh, save now. Other topics that come up at this point um, with investments and retirement, then you need to see the people who that's their business and that's what they do. They have people that are specialists in the areas for insurance. Um, you need to know, have somebody evaluate what you need and what's gonna work for you. If you want to make an investment, um, how to do it. There are people who work on commission. They get paid for selling you a certain product, but there's also a set of people that will tell you that they're fiduciaries. So you'll see the ads on television that say they're fiduciaries, which mean they're supposed to look out for you. They're supposed to give you the best advice that they can and suggest products to you that fit your situations not the products that are going to pay them the biggest commissions. Now, not only our credit union, but other groups will also have this kind of financial education on their um, websites that's free. So if you have a question, um, you can go on our site and see if it's listed in our courses, or you can go on Google and ask the question and they will point you to places and you sort of want to look at more than one to make sure that you're getting a non-biased answer and that you're not looking at a site that's simply trying to sell you something. So, but for everything that you do financially, checking accounts cost different things. Some don't cost anything at all. Some require a deposit. Uh, some have stiffer penalties for not keeping certain balances. Some of them have things for being uh, over 55. They have different ages. So you need to shop around for all your financial needs. If you do have credit issues or credit problems, you can get your credit counseling free of charge. 
uh, in the education that talks about credit in our course, it also tells you who to talk to for free credit counseling. You should not be paying anybody for that. If you should check your own credit report, if there's something wrong on it, you need to deal with the reporting agency to get it corrected. Again, you don't have to pay people to do any of this. All of this is available for you free of charge. I, I have a question. Yes. So this is Bobby. Mm -hmm. yeah. How, How forgiving doing? are credit union versus bank banks when people come with a bankruptcy on their record? Everybody would set their own policies. And I uh -huh. think that we would work with that person individually to see what the issue is, um, why it was, and try and find a way to do what you need to do. Like they, so it's possible they can get a loan with that, with the, they don't have a squeaky clean record or like I said, bankruptcy is probably. Uh, it would depend. I don't know the ins and outs to the underwriting, but I know that we handle things individually and you would look at the bankruptcy and try and see kind of what it would, uh, what, what it was caused by. Um, and how soon it's going to be over, maybe some other way of dealing with it, what kind of bankruptcy was filed. Because when a person is still under a bankruptcy, the threat to the credit union or the lending institution is then that they can't come after you for payment if you renege on that loan. So you would have a high risk. So, but um, there might be extenuating circumstance. So I would say uh, come into one of the branches or call them and talk to someone and see what they can offer you. Bobby, you're muted. Bob, Bobby, you're muted. So all is not lost, huh? All is not lost and it doesn't no. stay forever. <laughs> yeah. So. And the same thing with your um, credit cards, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and working to reestablish credits, credit unions can work with you and help you try and reestablish your credit or get it cleaned up. There are um, times when you can say, get a credit card that's secured, which means that you have a credit card, you're using it like a credit card, but you've already paid for part of it. Maybe you paid $200 and that's your limit and that's what you can use. And it's a guaranteed card because you've already put up the $200, but it's not reported differently on your credit report. It still shows that you have a line of credit that you're paying every month. And you do need to, um, when you're trying to pay off a bill or if you've been late or had some problems with it, you need to make payments. It's it doesn't help if you pay it off altogether because then if you look at your credit report, it'll say late, 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 late zero. If you pay it off over a few months time, then it will show that you've been making timely payments for a while. Did that make sense? All right, all right. Any other uh, questions uh, as we go along? guys are a real talkative bunch here. Okay. I have, I have <laughs> one other. Go, Go ahead. Thank you. Um, through your credit union, do, do you offer credit cards to, to members? Yes. We do offer you? credit cards and debit cards. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm trying to look at mine now to see what we offer. We offer Visa. I don't know if we offer MasterCard, but we also, we offer a Visa account. Um, our rates on that visa account can also be better than other places. Credit unions can offer you better rates. Do you know what your current rates are? I do not. Um, it, and they do it might be on this website. On level. I'm sorry. It might be on this website. Uh, just it a may be, here. there's a thing called fees and it would also depend on what kind of credit card you got. Okay, let me uh, 
let me let me try sharing just and I see you Tony Tony's Tony's next uh, for and some of this again would have to do with you personally and what your credit looks like so it may be that you're offered a credit card or a loan but it may be uh, at a higher interest rate because your credit is not pure. So um, does this help uh, Katabasi and, and uh, Celeste? Okay, that's uh, the checking. And if you scroll down, I don't know if it has, it has okay. money market rates in there. So there would be some different rates and it has your savings rates. And it may also have, um, your share certificates, when I was talking about getting CDs, we call them share certificates. So it shows you what rates they're paying and how many um, months they are. So there may also be credit cards in there. Let's see. Certificates. Let's see anything. Or your mortgage call. Um, oh, here. That's, there it is. Okay. Here we go. All right. Okay. Okay. So you see that there are different kinds. So if your credit limit is awarded to you, um, which would be because you have excellent credit, uh, and your also your income as to whether or not your ability to pay it off. So if you had, if you were given a limit between five thousand and twenty-five thousand, your interest rate would be nine point nine nine. If your limit was lower between 500 and uh, 49.99, it would be 12.95. If you're a student, you would have the lower rate. And if you had a premium secured, uh, this is one where we were talking about rebuilding something. So you would, you would set this up so that it was a guarantee in it and the interest on that would be at 9.9, 7.99. And you would have some collateral pledge for that, which it says 110% of your shares would be pledged. Right. Now, we also have, is mm -hmm. it necessary to, is it, necess it would be based on your own personal, um, income and ability to pay um, as, as an individual. Um, let me rephrase that. As a member of uh, the credit union and you're seeking a credit card, um, it would be based on your own individual uh, financial situation and reflective of the ability to pay. Am I correct on that? Yes, and your credit report and the credit report so now in terms of what you can count as income um if you are receiving uh income from a, another source that can be documented that you want to include like if you are um getting alimony or um some sort of settlement uh any steady stream of income that you want to produce and show for it would be counted. Anything that you can document, mm -hmm. or I would say most things that you can document. Mm -hmm. So it would be necessary just to go in and say, um, uh, I'm a member of the Will State community. I mean, once the application, everything goes through, you, you go in and say, I'm a, a member of the Will State community um would that be sufficient or would it be required to have you would go of... in and you would open an account um at the credit union mm -hmm. so that you become a member uh there is a requirement that you keep a minimum um of 25 dollars i believe on deposit as your membership sort of fee that just stays there mm -hmm. uh, and that could be in a savings account um, and then if you wanted to open the credit account the credit card or apply for a credit card that would be done okay. you could apply for any of the products offered with a 25 dollar um, minimum in the account 
Right. Okay. Now, yeah. if you want to do it before the uh, um, they answer us on the church's application, then you could go in and um, if you don't fit into anybody else's category that's a, a seg, you could join one of the groups that would allow us to go ahead and take your membership, like the South Berkeley Development Group. Okay, good. Or, Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Sister Tony is next to go ahead. Thank you. Um, so I've been a member of um, the credit union that I'm a member of since about 2007. And unfortunately, I haven't really been active as far as keeping up with all the going ons. And now I realize from listening to you, I need to be more proactive with that. Mm -hmm. So while you were while you were talking, I kind of, I went to their website to see if I could find information about dividends and um, the annual meeting, and I couldn't find anything. So, should those things be posted on the website, or or is this something that I need to make an appointment and go in and talk no. to somebody? Um. The website probably has minutes um, from the last annual meeting somewhere on their site. Mm -hmm. It may tell you who the board of directors are. Uh, they will, they, there's a whole process that they have to go to for mm -hmm. uh, electing their board. There's certain timelines that have to happen mm -hmm. and they are required to have an annual meeting at least once a year. And the members have to be informed and they have to be informed early. So you should be getting some sort of notification mm -hmm. um, from them. So you might want to check with them since you've moved and see if you have anything and see if your account is there if you've not done anything with it. Oh, you just no, my account, my account open. is very active. <laughs> okay, so they should yeah, be I have several saving, savings accounts and all of that, but I just, you know, I haven't, and I probably gotten a notice about a meeting and just didn't pay any attention to it. And now I realize I've been negligent. So like I said, I went to the website, but I couldn't, I saw, I found a sheet but it said zero dividends. And I'm like, zero dividends. Well, now, yeah, because money's been funny. You know, if, if mm. you, if, um, if we're not making any money because the interest rates are so low, then there's no money to pay out for dividends. So- Well, the interest rates are high because I talked to someone yesterday about, uh, refinancing my house through the credit union rather than Wells Fargo. And she right. told me I had a better rate with Wells Fargo right now, that the credit union rate was actually higher, which I, that was strange to me, but she told me to wait until next year. But she said next the credit year, union huh? rate was higher than the rate that I'm currently paying. Okay, and I would say shop around for rates and um, read the information on buying and refinancing on the that on our site under the courses because okay. um, nothing is nice and straightforward and simple when you go to refinance or when you're trying to purchase a home yeah, because there are different kinds of products of what you choose to do. And so just simply looking at the, the first rate that you come across may not be the rate for the product that you want. You know, so it may be that an adjustable rate mortgage might work for you. It, um, if it's what fits you right now, you might do it with a plan to do something else 10 years from now. You know, if you know that you're planning on moving in 10 years, then maybe you don't care about a 30 year mortgage um, or you could do a 30 year mortgage because the monthly rate would be lower, or you could do an adjustable rate mortgage. And if it doesn't adjust for 10 years, then you don't care because you're going to sell it or move. 
Hmm. So you have Thank to look you. at the different products that work for you and check different, um, and you can belong to more than one credit union. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thought, you, thought, you'd thought you'd slide that in. Huh? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I like put that out there. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> and, uh, somebody uh, else, I believe, had sent me a question. Minister um, Bill uh, has, has his hand up. I'm not yeah. sure if it's the one that, that submitted the question. But go ahead, Bill. Yes. I was just wondering about financial instruments like credit cards, debit cards that provide additional information beyond just the transaction, some cryptic code and an amount, something that provides a level of detail like you were talking about so that it's easier to electronically track expenditures over long periods. Do you know that the credit unions are pushing for that, that actually involves That's, um... Uh, I would have to see if they have that coding on there. I don't know offhand if what we offer is that. And credit unions um, are buying the service from someone for your credit yeah. cards. All the institutions do. So yeah. it's what package and processing you bought from them, if they would categorize it for you. And whether or not they would keep it running for more than a year, I don't know. But I can find out and get back to you. Thanks. All right. All right. That's, uh, I like to hear that. Any other, uh, anyone else have a, have a question before we move on? We, we see the dashing, uh, handsome uh, Desmond uh, uh, Iman is on and uh, others as well. What was the question in the chat? Uh, someone referred to that. What was the question there? That might have been from uh, Bob Bill. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Okay, it's 6.01. Generally, we go to 6.30. Um, so let's get some more uh, information. Let's, let's get some more information from Celeste while she's here. Uh, Celeste, uh, is it okay to put your number in the chat? Say if people want to contact you privately, would that would that? Yes, work? it is. Okay. And I may not have the information at my fingertips, but I can certainly hook you up. Would you uh, put with someone would, who would, can? Would you do that then? Because uh, uh, you know some of this is really personal, and you might not want to ask. Uh, uh, you know with everybody here um, and and this going to YouTube. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Um, should, I, should I not post it, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> so in general, um, I think for dealing with our finances that we have to take a good look of where we are and what we want, and then go about finding the people to provide us with that service or that information of what you want. Because you can um, help get out of a jam if you're in it. Uh, you always need to look for rates and compare just like you would shop for anything else. And when it comes for investments, you want to do the same thing. And you have to realize um, with investments that you may have to ride it out. And you do want to be diversified. You know, if, if all your little money is in our retirement accounts and we look at what happened to them in the last few months, it may have given you a heart attack. You know, that they lost money significantly, but you hope that it's going to rise up again. And there are different tools for it. And everybody, I personally think you need to talk to a variety of financial people because people tend to sell you where they're coming from. Insurance people will answer your questions in insurance products. Sure. Uh, stock brokers will answer your questions in their stocks or for their company or their hedge funds. And know that these things have a cost. And so you wanna ask the long-term cost of whatever you're investing in. And they, 
ask them so they will answer you plainly um, and specify exactly what you want. Otherwise, they give you a perspective and stuff that's buried and you, it takes rocket science to figure out what it is they're actually going to charge you for. You know, I saw, I was looking on the, uh, uh, on the website. Hey, Mona, how are you? Uh, and, and I saw, uh, I saw this as well. Um, and, you, you know, news and events, so you can stay updated. And um, so for here, looks like, let's see. You know, it can let you know what's going on with the nominations and, and the bios and then annual reports that looks uh let's let's just go here for for grins so you can get all this uh good information yes and your credit union accounts just like your bank accounts are guaranteed um they're protected by insurance up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in your account. So if you have more than that, you probably want to put it somewhere else. <laughs> it has this, this uh, handy dandy treasurer's report with the balance sheet. And right. All that stuff. Income statement. So yeah. Um, I was just talking to my son uh, earlier today, and and uh, you know, okay, he was born in '91, uh, and mm -hmm. probably uh, can't conceive of a time when there wasn't a website or uh, things that you can actually go on. You know, I mean, before you'd have to go down there or or call and have them send something to you. Now you can just now you can just type in the numbers uh, or or the name and. Uh, and, and get a lot of this information at your fingertips. You can, um, but we do have people mm -hmm. there for those people who do not want to use a computer and do not want to go online, although everything is moving in that direction. So that's one of the challenges um, for the board to help uh, figure out how to engage people who are doing everything online. How do you develop that personal relationship with somebody that you've never met sure. uh, because they've, they've opened their accounts and they've done everything online? Yeah, yeah, I guess that is a challenge, yes. Are there any other questions? I see my friend Zarita Sharp is, is on, Mama Fu is on. Wanna say a happy belated birthday to Sister Destiny that joined us and uh, also, uh, I missed it, Bobby and, and uh, Sugar D. I know you guys' birthday was on the 9th. A lot Thank of, you. A lot of eagles. Uh, you know, the higher Thank form you. of Scorpio is eagle. So, uh, uh, Aaron, so yeah. Anyone, anyone uh, that wants to uh, uh, ask a question or make a comment? Well, go ahead, uh, Kalahari. Take yourself off mute. Uh, can you hear me, uh, Minister? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, I uh, had, uh, well, this was years ago, but, uh, you know, they've um, people have always said to us, uh, put your money in a minority-owned bank. And so I put, oh, I live in San Francisco. Uh, I put uh, my money in a minority-owned bank, and for some reason, something happened, and they got gobbled up by one bank, and then eventually another one. And when they got gobbled up with that third bank, uh, they had uh, their own people and they fired pretty much everybody but their, their own people. So, uh, and I would go in there and ask for specific things like cash and they would uh, rather, you know, they saw sort of suggest that that was for their, you know, their favorite people. Uh, but anyway, uh, um, when you were talking, I was laughing uh, about um, budgets and all that type of stuff, because it sounded like you were talking to me. Um, uh, there was uh, one other thing. Oh, I, I uh, had, had a 
a chance, or, or at least I tried to buy a house here in San Francisco years ago. Uh, I gave the guy the money. He wouldn't um, do any more than put the money in his account. I had to sue him and get a lawyer, which I never really had uh, any experience with. So I, I didn't even know which lawyer to get, criminal, civil, you know, that sort of thing. Um, another time I tried to buy a house, I just sort of uh, didn't want the house because um, I don't know, I just didn't want it. And, uh, you know, uh, not having any experience at buying houses and not knowing that uh, uh, some people, most of us get our first house is not really, uh, you know, really all that nice of a house, but I, I, I didn't um, uh, get that uh, particular house. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I, did, I, I did have a chance uh, to buy a home here in San Francisco for uh, uh, years ago, you know, before the houses cost about a million to three, four million dollars. Mm -hmm. I, I had a chance to buy them here, buy, um, but um, I, I don't know, it just didn't seem to work out for some reason. But uh, but anyway, I just wanted to make that uh, that one comment about the uh, banks and the uh, they, they sort of. <laughs> I didn't really want me as a customer, but okay, that's all I really wanted to say, Minister. All right, yeah, and you do have to to look at people and and purchasing your. Um, you have to keep asking questions, and um, to some degree, banks are selling you a product, or you know, even the credit union mortgage companies. They're all a little bit different in the product that they can offer, but you have to be, you have to ask questions. So they're giving you a clear picture. Um, I'm not sure with California real estate regulations, but uh, having a real estate agent rather than trying to do it on your own helps answer part of those questions. The other part um, is when you, are closing that you have an attorney um, that's looking over what you're signing, even though it's kind of boilerplate to make sure of what's there and to make sure that the people they're selling you something that they own, which comes in the title search. So having somebody go through that procedure with you is not free. It can be a little pricey, but it protects you in the long run because now people are getting so good at the fraud They've been renting houses and selling things to people that they didn't own in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, so they didn't have the right to do that. That's been coming on the news. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Or they've been showing that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Sister Celeste, I, I, I'm about to hit enter, but uh, is it all right for me to put your phone number and uh, 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 what, uh, uh, email address uh, uh, yes, in the chat it is. for everyone? Okay. Okay, it me, is. And, and I and wish there, I'd like for you to look at it to make sure that I have the information correct. Okay. And there was something that crossed my mind when he was saying it that I was going to mention. And of course it's gone. It'll come um, back. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come back. Let's oh. see. Okay. I need to get to. And Sister Dondiway, good to see you. Glad you could join us today as well. Mama Fanya. Well, Mama Fanya is our uh, financial expert. Uh, so, uh, yes. You probably wouldn't refer to herself as that. <laughs> All right. So, but I you know, am not. They're just ways that you can educate yourself. Okay, so is that correct, what I have in there? I have a... I don't know, because I can't get to it. It I should see. say that my phone number is 574-217-3621. That's correct. Uh -huh. Please bear in mind that I am on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So um, I do usually stay up late. And I try and remember that when I talk to people on the West Coast that I don't call them at six o'clock in the morning when I think it's nine. 
and, and my and email address is uh, c mcallister at live l i v e dot com. Okay, that's what I have. That's what I have. Yes. All right. Cool. Hold on, you have C. Malister. You don't have Mac Allister. Should be M C C M C A L L I S T E R. C M C. Okay, let me. Uh, uh, so let me let me let me try it again. So C M C. A L L. A L L. I S T E R. I S T E R at live.com correct mm -hmm. okay good good thanks all right how's does that look better mm -hmm. i'm uh i'm not that great a typer you know one of my best friends uh early in the uh early at will say um he could type 80 words a minute you know, he could always he could always get a job. You know, just back. That, you know, when we talk about Jeruba, he was our first uh, uh, musical director. He could type 80, 100 words a minute. You know, just, just yeah, it's running off. OK, um, we got about 15 minutes. Uh, anything uh, else that we should be uh, covering, uh, Sister Celeste? Um, should be, I don't know. They had a note in asking me this about tithing. Uh -huh. I can't particularly answer that uh, with any sort of expertise. I believe tithing is normally 10%. And I believe that Bose approaches it in uh, tithing money or you your talents and experience and time yes yes that's uh so that's the uh that's the general answer yes uh -huh. yes now the other part of that i would say is to give to yourself if i had done what my dad told me to do back in the day was every dollar that passed through your hands a dime of it is yours that you saved that stick it away as i said i have not done that <laughs> So, but if you think about it, that's about the same thing as sales tax. And we pay that so we could pay ourselves. All right. All right. Um, so how long does the application process take? I what think is? it would be relatively short, depending on what your documentation would be, if it's easily available. And they would run a credit report. Uh, they would need verification of your income. So if you've got your pay stubs and and um, they can pull up a credit report on you, it shouldn't take very long at all. Okay. Okay. If you uh, want a more definite answer, I can find that out for you. All right. No, that's fine. All right. Anyone else? Uh, the man called Kitty has taken his has has taken his camera oh, sorry. off of, uh, off stop video. Uh, were you going to say something there, brother? I, I would say most definitely, Celeste. This was a wonderful and inspiring presentation, and I congratulate you not only on your broad base of knowledge in this field, but obviously, and I think everyone would agree that your passion to doing this work for the benefit of our greater family and community is much, much appreciated. So I wanna salute you for the work that you do. I know it's not easy. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate that. And as a side note, um, I've been doing so much research now and I just uh -huh. wanna put into context something you really began about, about keeping budget, especially at this time of the year, so very important. I have been compiling data on African-Americans, demographic data, as well as economic data that is literally the state of the art. I'm hoping I'll be invited to WOSE or to this, this community to be able to, to share the data. And I think everyone will realize, yeah, this is undeniably the state of the art data. And even on our population numbers, 
while they say that Hispanics outnumber us by some 20 million, well, if we start to consider the way these numbers are broken down, Blacks in America, if we include Afro Latinos, and if we include those of mixed race, the one drop rule, we outnumber Hispanic people, especially when you take many of those Hispanic people that go into the white classification. But that's a whole nother subject. Well, Six if you look at the way they asked that census question, which is where they're getting their numbers from, it was very interesting because, um, especially between um, the, the Latin groups, because they ask your ethnicity for that group in particular, mm -hmm. and then they ask you your race. And so when I did the census and I was asking people, they either weren't going to respond to that question or were going to identify as white because they didn't give them a choice of brown. Mm -hmm. You could be black or you could be white. Well, I did use the research from Pew Charitable Research Foundation in asking the question how many of these so-called Hispanics are Afro-Latinos, and they gave a figure of about 6 million. So if we then go to that total classification of Hispanics and try and break them down, that would be actually 6 million removed from them and put into the category of African-descended people, and we recognize them as family. But the bigger picture I wanted to, to, to maybe put on the table, maybe we have time to discuss it briefly, African-Americans over the course of 61 days of November and December are spending above our yearly average spending pattern, a total of one, mil, one billion, with a B, $105 million a day in this holiday spending bubble. Over the course of the 61 days of November and December, this amounts to a total of $67.43 billion predicted for this shopping season. And then there is a larger season of 80 days at just between, before Halloween and into the second week of January, where the total goes up to over uh, up to about $88.5 billion. So we asked the question, and anyone, I would love a response from you, Celeste, M. Hotep, or anyone else, what can we do to redirect a portion of that spending into what becomes developmental investment for our larger community? Well, um, uh, I want to thank you for uh, cheering me up uh, with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, I, I want to say that that was one of the reasons why. Um, the uh, African-American uh, celebration of Kwanzaa was created uh, because the, uh, the two principles that come to mind are uh, Ujima and Ujima. Uh, and uh, Ujima is uh, building our own businesses and together profiting from them. And so uh, I think some of that spending can go into, everybody knows somebody that's, that's doing a, a business of some sort that 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 could be put into that, and then also Ujima is 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 working together, making uh, uh to making our our, our our collective vocation, the building and developing our community, and uh, uh, making our brothers, brothers, sisters, ours to solve together. So um, I think those two focusing on those two principles, really during this whole holiday time, we we need to look at at the uh, principles as as pistons in an engine that 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 we so the unity that you talked about in terms of numbers that are there that's that's greater than and I'm glad you pointed out that yes a lot of Hispanics classify themselves as white I was I was uh, I was shocked to find that out in the 90s somebody uh, from the East Coast uh, used to meet with us and, and pointed that out and then. You know, we just need to uh, uh, take care of our own in terms of businesses, and we need to we need to have the the proper interaction with each other in terms of of business activities. You know, above and beyond, uh, and, and that's something that we that we uh, certainly strive to do. And we'll say, uh, people say, well, why are you doing this? Hey, you know, we need to spend this with our with our people. So if if we ask somebody to do something for our website. 
you know, we 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 uh, we compensate them. You know, if somebody's doing something uh, in terms of services or goods, you know, just working within ourselves, I think, is is one way. Go ahead, Mama Fanya. Mama Fanya has her hand up. Go ahead. And then I see a brother. Uh, Kalahari. Uh, this topic reminds me of something that um, I heard Brother Renoko Rashidi mention, um, and it's about, you know, it's about supporting Black businesses. And when he, he said his practice is when he goes into a Black-owned business, and if, you know, if by chance he's not treated right or the product isn't up to par, he doesn't leave and not go back. You know, he doesn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. He goes back and uh, schools the person on, well, you know, this is how you should have treated me. This is, you know, correct, positive customer service, or this product needs to be improved this way. So he doesn't, um, you know, do what some, you know, what some of us do is we'll go to a black owned business and not get treated right or the product or the service isn't up to par. And then, you know, we, we, we brush them off. But on the other hand, we'll continue to go to white owned businesses who, you know, treat us like trash and keep, you know, continue giving our money to white owned businesses. So, um, you know, I just wanted to mention that, that, you know, his practice was if service wasn't right or the product wasn't uh, up to par, he would school them on how they need to improve and continue to support that business. Mama Fanya, did they, did, was it well received? I mean, I know there's a way you approach it. Was it, did he say that usually they would receive it well when he goes he, back to say he stuff? He didn't mention, but he didn't mention, and knowing Renoko Rashidi, brother Renoko Rashidi, he would do it in a way that, um, you know, would not cause animosity or negative feelings. He's, he, you know, I, been been to his lectures since probably uh, the 1990s or so. So I've seen him, uh, you know, for a long, 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 long time. Interacted with him, and he doesn't uh, come across as a person who would go in, you know, with the angry attitude, right? And you know, and try to school uh, these business owners. But you know, coming in as a friend, as a community member, as a brother. You know, I want to support you, and this is what you need to do to continue getting my support. You know, this is how you run a, a business, how how you treat the community. Well, it's good if they received it, you know, because mm -hmm. some people don't, but good. I, I think that's a good thing that we do give our people feedback, and I think that's very important that we do that in mm -hmm. a nice way a and nice professional. Way. Yes, I think that's really important, mm -hmm. and if we do want to be the best and we are usually the best we will receive that and, and make corrections mm -hmm. and i think we can reach out to more businesses now after we have had the COVID years there are a lot of people that are doing business online may not be doing it in brick and mortar and mortar stores and you can go all over the country or around the world and getting products sent to you now easier um, just going searching for the product that you want mm -hmm. online and then see where it is. They're different in various directories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the course of the research that I have been doing, I have significantly updated data on the U.S. Black business background. It's not, it's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. Mm -hmm. During the first five months of the COVID pandemic, 41% of Black businesses fail. In the recovery that has taken place, we now have expanded from the 2012 census reading of two, um, 2.584 million Black-owned businesses is now 3.06 million Black-owned businesses. But if you look at the income from Black-owned businesses and you compare them to other ethnic groups, our performance is very, very bad. One more thing, when it comes to black banking, our performance is, is dismal. I know that's been the subject of credit unions and I completely believe in the value of credit unions insofar as supporting family and community. They've proven themselves and it's been discussed very well by 
our sister Celeste here this evening. But when it comes to the Black banking industry, the federal banks, our behavior is very dismal. One of the things that I have proposed in this extensive research that I've been doing or in the book I'm writing called, What Do We Do With Christmas? Is that for many of us in this circle, we may remember that as when we were children, our parents would buy us savings bonds yes. for Christmas presents. Yes, yes. Very pragmatic because they, were, they would get them at a discount, but they would mature. It was also a way of teaching the children delayed gratification when it came to handling their finances. And I have put forward the idea and it could be done, but it's got to be done by major banking institutions that we as black people in America, we have the right and we might have the obligation to create a privately issued equity bond. We might even term it our own self reparations bond. If we had an instrument that we could sell to our people, they would be an, an, an interesting and interest bearing um, investment for each family, if we could capture a mere 2% of the money being spent during the 61 days of November and December, that would provide a sovereign wealth fund of some $1.78 billion that could be just a 2% capture of that, for which we could do some things such as with one third of that, we could open 112 grocery stores. Right now, Blacks are the only ethnic group in America, or I, I should say African-Americans are the only ethnic group in America with no grocery store chains. I can't say Blacks because the Nigerians now have launched a grocery store chain in America, and we need to claim them as we family too. So we're talking about a new strategic way of looking at this group but as everyone here obviously understands, it takes the instruments of macro power management, including the banking industries to make these commitments. Otherwise, the trajectory that we are on, I said it in my book, fade to black. We have less than 45 more years left to exist as a people within this society. Well, I would suggest um, for reading, a book called The Color of Money, Black Banks and the Racial Wealth Gap by Mercer Baradarin, and I will spell that. It's M-E-H-R-S-A. The last name is B-A-R-A-D-A-R-A-N. And in it, they go over the history of it. Bobby did a very good um, presentation probably over a year ago now on the original bank. Um, actually, it was a savings bank and it was a new idea and it wasn't well done and it ended up taking all of our money um, because they took the money from Blacks and gave it to uh, supported white ventures. So we didn't have control. So we need to have control of the issue uh, and what's going on and setting the policy. There's another book that I have not read that I'm looking forward to called Franchise, The Golden Arches in Black America. So we have to see who's behind our money and what they're doing and understand that um, banking in banks rather than credit unions is not a benevolent thing to do. They're a company that's out to make money. No, no question. No mm -hmm. point well taken. No question. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, um, Chef Kitty. And uh, you know, I was wondering, so is it possible for, for you to come to this area and do some chef things? I mean, we are talking about uh, you, you know, collective uh, work, and uh, I mean, I know <laughs> well, that let me... I know that Sugar D and Tony are going to be uh, in this area uh, around in the springtime. Maybe we, that's right. Maybe let we me tell you, get together, and uh, it would be absolutely an honor. I did get some notes from some of this family about uh, them coming to one of my first 
Saturday feasts, which have become increasingly less frequent as my travel schedule seems to have jumped. I just returned from a week in Jamaica, Montego Bay and Ocho Rios, mm -hmm. and a group of Black real estate investors from London wow. flew me in to be their chef for the week. And so wow. I we can we can work it out. All the real estate investors there in the Bay Area, hook a brother up. I'd love to get on and right. get off airplanes and have a great time. Right. And you will eat like kings. I'll send you pictures if you haven't seen them on my you, Facebook. You know, page. now I I I, I showed Doris uh, the pictures on 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 your website. Uh, mm -hmm. Destiny, Destiny left. I was going to say because I had contacted Destiny and uh, Destiny. Muhammad is a fantastic harpist. And uh, so I asked her to make some uh, some videos of her uh, playing for our service. And so we're going to, she, those are coming forward and, and, you know, we're going to compensate her for that. Uh, so it's, we've gone over time. Sister Celeste, excellent as people have, have put in, in the chat. We're glad that you were able to, uh, even though uh, you, you weren't at your computer, you were able to still come across for us and, uh, and, and give us the information. Uh, how was, um, how was uh, last week? Uh, did you guys enjoy last week? Um, uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Raznow Hill and, and, uh, and, and Miss Mariana. Uh, I, I mean, she's really good, you, you know, as a, as a uh, commentator, she's, 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 she's fantastic. Um, I'd like to close, uh, uh, Doris and I were there, uh, in, uh, Cancun and, uh, we went to, uh, uh, the Cancun Jazz Festival. We haven't been there since 1990. Uh, How not, yeah. Was it? yeah, well, it was, it was great. Let me just show you a little, a little bit of who was there. Uh, you might recognize this guy. Earth, Wind, and Fire. And, uh, oh, these see. Earth, Wind, and Fire is not his band. Okay, they sit on Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay. And then here's here here they are again. Looks like that band has grown. have a request before we end yes um, yes if you have questions please ask me but if there's something that you want from a financial institution um please let me know if there's a product or a need that you have please let me know what it is because it may be something that we can develop if we don't already offer it mm. all right 
All right, everybody got that? That's, that's good. Thank that's you. Good. Thank you, Bill, for your, uh, for your chat uh, there. And um, I'm glad everyone could join us. Queen Sheila, it's always a pleasure to see you. Sister Zarita, great to see you. Mama Fanya, Sugar D, Heidi, I and I, Brethren, Tony, great questions. Thank you, Bill, great questions. Kalahari, great questions. Uh, Queen Sheila, Bobby, Sister Mona, Brother Katabasi, uh, Mama Rose, Thandiwe, and Mama Fua. Glad you all could join us. Uh, Hopefully, if you're if you're available tomorrow, remember a study of sacred scriptures on this same Zoom channel starting at six uh, Pacific, and we're just going to go for an hour, and we're going to start. You know, the anniversary for Oakland is happening on uh, the third of December. I think mm -hmm. that's the right date. Is the fourth? Is the fourth? Thank you, thank you, Mama Fanya, and uh, it'll be forty-two years. So we're going to be focusing on the 42 declarations of innocence and, and on that number. So we're going to begin a little bit of that tomorrow. So I uh, hope you could join us tomorrow at six. Uh, love to each and every one. Guidance and protection along the way. Anka Jobsonev, life, prosperity, and health. Live up.